What's up guys, it's Crypt Trader again. I'm coming to you with a weekly update video for Digitex Futures Exchange. The plan is to make a video like this once per week to share with you guys any updates as well as one or two tips for getting started on the exchange and actually trading. So the most recent update that I'd like to show you guys that was updated just yesterday on the UI is the order history and trade history here. So if you go to the order history tab, you can actually see where you can filter the orders by the last 24 hours, one week, one month, or three month. And so I have it on the last 24 hours. So what it shows me here is all the orders that were placed in the last 24 hours, whether they were filled or canceled, which you can see in the status column here. So if you go from left to right, you can see the time that the order was placed, what contract it was that you're trading, was it a limit or market order, was it a buy or sell, and the price. You can also see the size that was filled, if it was filled, if it was canceled, obviously it'll show zero, and you have a trigger condition. And if you want to, you can actually specifically search by the exact date in the past. So if you're just looking for a particular day in the past, you can do that and search that way uh, if that's what you want to do. And we have the trade history tab right here where you can actually see all the trades that I've taken in the last 24 hours. It gives similar information, but if you want more granularity and more specific info, you can always look at the order history here that actually shows the, you know, the fills. It gives you a little bit more information on the order history tab. Now that you've seen the two new updates here, I would like to go over one or two tips that will help you get started whenever you sign up and get ready to start trading on the exchange. So the tip for today is going to go through the reasoning behind how you get your pre-selected contract set and the leverage that you use for when you get your account set up. In this scenario, we're going to pretend that we're on mainnet and we have 10,000 Digitex in our account, which is a very reasonable size account. You know, at current price of Digitex, that's about $420 trading account. If the price is at 10 cent after launch, you know, this will be a $1,000 trading account. So I wanted to use something that's realistic for, you know, the majority of people that are going to be on here. So the first thing that I would like to do as a responsible trader is determine how much I'm willing to risk. Now, the way that you look at that is on the ladder here, how much are you willing to risk per $5 move or tick? So if I was to get in a long here at 68.95, how much am I willing to lose if it goes down $5 or one tick against me? Now, a good rule of thumb is to risk 1% of your capital. If we were to risk 1% of our capital in this scenario, it would be 100 Digitex because we have 10,000 Digitex available. 1% of that is 100 Digitex. Now we have to use that information to set our pre-select contracts over here. Now the way we do that is quite easy. We know we're willing to risk 100 Digitex per tick. So all we have to do is multiply 100 Digitex by 10 and that gives us the number of contracts that we, we can use for that position. And so 100 times 10 is 1,000. And so 1,000 contracts would be a 1% loss or gain per tick for our account balance. It's very simple math. So now all we need to do is click this gear right here and we can see that we already have a thousand here which was one percent risk per tick. If we want to do, let's say we want to do half a percent risk per tick then we have 500 already which is half of that and we can also do a quarter percent risk per tick for the more conservative traders uh, and then we'll also do two percent risk per tick which would be two thousand. We can double that to four thousand which is four percent risk and maybe go all the way up to 10% risk for the gamblers out there, which would be 10,000 contracts. And we can save that. And now we have our contract quantities set and ready to go for us to start trading on the ladder. The last thing that we have to do before we can start trading with these pre-selected position sizes is make sure our leverage is set properly because we're at 1x leverage right now, which means that we can only take a position of 10,000 Digitex so if I was to try to take this 1,000 contract position size, which we determined to be 1% risk per tick, and I tried to mark it long right now, if you see I click that, it says balance is not enough. So what that means is, is we don't have a high enough leverage. So now we have to go in and make sure our leverage is high enough to support these contract sizes. So let's go over here to where the leverage is set and click on that. And you can see we're currently at 1x leverage, which means our maximum position size can't exceed 70 contracts which is low, that's lower than any of our pre-selects here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go to 100X just to see what our max is. So this is the absolute maximum that we can do because we're maxed out on leverage. That's the maximum contract size we can do. You can see that that's higher than all of our pre-selects except for the one that we set at 10,000, which was 10% risk per uh, tick. Uh, obviously not everybody's gonna risk that much per tick. 
uh, in the first place. So what we can do is we can actually step this down. We can either leave it leave it at 100x like this and confirm, and then just change our last pre-select to a 7,000 like that. So we can confirm right here. Go back in here and just change this to 7,000 because that's the max that we can possibly do even with 100x. And we can leave it like that. Uh, that is definitely an option. Or what you can do is come in here and step it down so that let's just say we want to go to the next highest pre-select which was 4,000 we can just step the leverage down with this little slider and get it down a little bit so that we are at a lower leverage and the thing about a lower leverage is the lower leverage will make it less likely that you'll get liquidated so it might make sense for you to step the leverage down it gives you a little bit more breathing room when you're in a position and I'll show you what I mean here in a second so let's set this leverage back to 100x here and confirm now at 100x if I was to use any of these pre-selected position sizes let's just go with a thousand contracts let's just say I mark it long here and when I mark it long you can see my entries at 70 90 our liquidation point is marked by this teardrop or this uh, orange yellow uh, line here where the spot price is shown and it gives us the liquidation price so you can go down one two three four five six seven eight ticks before you get liquidated from your entry at 100x leverage now I'm going to go ahead and get out of this position, market sell to get out. Now let's go back up here and change it back to 58x and confirm. Now with 58x leverage, let's do the same thing with 1,000 contracts. I'm going to market buy right here. You can see we're at 69.90, but now our liquidation price is, much, is further away. Instead of eight ticks away, we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 ticks away so we have more breathing room now that we're using lower leverage but the only thing is we can't use our highest set point now because our leverage isn't high enough we can only use up to 4,000 contracts in a position so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this position and mark it short and you can repeat this process all the way down let's say if you just want 2,000 contracts to be your max then just come over here and lower this down until you get to 2,000 contracts so 29x leverage would give you about 2,000 contracts and you can confirm. Now we're at 29x, you can't do these two, but you can do everything up to 2,000 and that gives you even more breathing room because now if we get into a position, you can see your liquidation is way down here now. It's a lot more than 13 ticks, so it gives you even more breathing room. It just depends on how much you're willing to risk per tick. It's a balance of setting the leverage to give you breathing room and how much you're willing to risk per tick to set these quantities right here. Now I hope this video gives you a better idea of how to set your pre-select position sizes and your leverage based on how much you're willing to risk and your account balance. Stay tuned for more update videos like this where I'll also share tips and tricks. I'll see you guys next time.